let's talk about neuropathy this neuropathy it occurs in different forms in patient one of the common manifestation is peripheral neuropathy peripheral polyneuropathy most commonly in lower limbs right in the lower limbs the neurons especially sensory neurons they may undergo dysfunction right they, but not only sensory motor neurons can also suffer now if sensory neurons initially involve the lower limbs or feet usually they develop symmetrical disease whatever is on the right side same is on the left side sensory problem paresthesias hyposensation or hypersensations right paresthesias tingling pins and needle and later on the main wall the hands that is why diabetic neuropathy is one of the example of polyneuropathy peripheral symmetrical polyneuropathy also called gloves and stocking disease because gloves area and stocking areas these are this is not stocking a girl this is i mean uh, that stocks right so what i'm talking about that these diabetic diabetic neuropathies first of all i talk about what kind of neuropathy polyneuropathy what kind of polyneuropathy symmetrical symmetrical mean whatever is happening to the right side of the body similar neurological damage is occurring to the left side of the body and classical example of this is yes gloves and stocking and this also contribute to the diabetic foot disease this also contribute to diabetic foot disease because as i told you previously macro angiopathy in the lower limb produces ischemia to the foot they contribute to the ischemic damage to the diabetic foot but if sensory nerves are damaged then patient might get little bit injury and ignore it and that area may may become later on infectious and infection may spread and this little problem yes this little problem might end up eventually into amputation of the some part of the lower limb is that right diabetes is one of the commonest causes of amputation of adult lower limbs non traumatic non traumatic right of course you can get amputation if you really want there are so many ways one of them is accidents trauma but non traumatic non traumatic amputations of the lower limb most commonly occur in the patient are done most commonly in the patient which are diabetic why because diabetes monster attacks a foot in many different ways i don't know this is very bad it, it loves to damage our heart loves to damage our brain loves to damage peripheral vessels and then it attacks the small vessels and loves to damage the retina loves to damage the kidneys and now it is attacking the neurons so in lower limb if sensory neurons are dysfunctional that will lead to less awareness of trauma to the lower limb and if motor neurons are damaged in the lower limb then person will develop abnormal mechanics of joints and muscles abnormal mechanics of joints and muscles that may may produce inappropriate pressure points in the lower limb especially on the soul and that might produce yes already blood flow is less at the top neuronal sensitivity is less and then there are abnormal pressure in some areas of the soul that will produce damage and ulcers there and here i must mention that when we talk about the neuropathy about the foot and we talk about the vasculopathy the vasculopathy is macrovascular and neuropathy is micro. microvascular 
right and later on i will later on i will tell you in diabetic foot there is also tendency of increased infections right later on much later on we'll have a full lecture one hour lecture on diabetic foot but let's come back so we were talking about neuropathy polyneuropathy symmetrical polyneuropathy if it is in lower limb and upper limb both then it is gloves and stocking distribution but some diabetic patient develop mononeuropathy also some diabetic patient develop mononeuropathy also and mononeuropathy mononeuropathy it means that there is isolated nerve damage that might that that might not be symmetrical for example if i develop my oculomotor nerve damage or i develop damage to the ducent nerve right now if isolated ducent nerve damage is there due to diabetes right abducent nerve is sixth cranial nerve which supplies the lateral rectus right now that is also neuropathy but because one nerve is affected and other nerve is not affected right or on one side median nerve is affected and other side median nerve is not affected then we cannot say that this is symmetrical disease this asymmetrical nerve damage if it is one single nerve we say it is mono neuritis this mono neuritis can occur in the sensory nerves and also can occur in motor nerve then we come to another condition that let's suppose you come across unusual patient who has abducent nerve damage on right eye and oculomotor nerve damage on the left side very unfortunate patient develop median nerve damage to right side and radial nerve damage to the left arm what do you think it is polyneuropathy no. it is not symmetrical polyneuropathy it is still mononeuropathy at multiple places it is mononeuropathy at multiple, multiple places because when we are saying polyneuropathy then there should be symmetrical involvement but if one side is abducent uh, nerve damage other side is yes oculomotor damage one side is median nerve damage maybe other side is radial nerve damage one side is sural nerve damage in the leg other is peroneal nerve damage so this is we these are not polyneuropathies these are mononeuropathies but at multiple places this condition is also called mononeuritis multiplex multiplex you know like cinemas multiple screens so multiple nerves are involved we call it mononeuropathy multi multiplex then we come to another condition that unfortunately this not diabetes microangiopathy not only not only that damages the sensory and motor neurons it can attack the autonomic nervous system also it can attack the autonomic nervous system also and if it damages the autonomic nervous system right there will be other problems for example if autonomic supply to the heart is damaged right then variation of heart rate will be reduced or increased variation will be reduced variation of heart beat beat to beat variation will be reduced because if you have healthy autonomic nervous system controlling your heart then of course adrenergic supply a noradrenergic supply that increases the heart rate and cholinergic supply decreases the heart rate but if both of them are dysfunctional increase and decrease in heart rate will not be showing variability right so heart rate variability will be reduced then in such patient who have autonomic neuropathy they may develop orthostatic hypotension what is orthostatic hypotension or postural hypotension that from lying down position for example here you are i hope you are not red headed but anyway here you are 
lying down or sitting and if you if first normal you are normal person lying down and due to some reason you suddenly stand up what should happen that blood should fall to the lower part of the body due to gravitational effect but lower limb vessels immediately contract when from lying down position a healthy person healthy person suddenly stand up or sit up we expect that blood due to gravitation effect blood should pool in lower part of the body and there will be there will be more venous pooling in lower part of the body and if there is more venous pooling in lower part of the body less blood is returning to the heart and cardiac output become less and that may lead to blackouts and your blood pressure may down fall down significantly but in normal healthy person it does not happen why because whenever you change your position from lying down to standing up there is a burst of sympathetic activity to the vessels in the lower part of the body and lower part of the body vessels constrict and squeeze the blood so that it does not pool into lower part of the body and there is appropriate return to the heart and cardiac output is reasonably maintained so that you don't develop vertigo or you don't develop blackouts or complications like this you are understanding but if there is a patient with diabetic neuropathy and diabetic autonomic neuropathy uh, autonomic neuropathy and that auto neuro autonomic neuropathy is damaging the neurons sympathetic neurons to the blood vessels patient may suffer from orthostatic hypotension or postural hypotension because from lying down position when he will stand up sympathetic nervous system is not working and vessels will not squeeze right and blood will not be returned properly to the heart it will pool into lower part of the body and venous return will be less less cardiac output and when there is less cardiac output patient may develop vertigo even blackouts right then this auto neuropathy may involve the autonomic nervous system to your gastrointestinal system right if your gastrointestinal system is affected right git motility will become abnormal you know vagus nerve which is the classical example of parasympathetic nervous system vagus nerve is motor to git if this vagus nerve develops it has lot of what type of fibers autonomic fibers right vagus nerve if vagus nerve develop diabetic macrovascular or microvascular yes microvascular very good microvascular disease vagus nerve develop the motor nerve to the gastrointestinal system fails and might be it will have multiple complications one of the complications may be that this failure of autonomic vagal supply to the stomach may contribute to a condition called gastroparesis what is that gastroparesis that stomach as movement is weak and feeble right we call it gastroparesis then there are some very unfortunate i think situation in some diabetic patient that autonomic nervous system going to the urogenital system is damaged that may lead to urinary retention <coughs> because autonomic nervous system plays a major role in urination is that right actually cholinergic system help the vasculature of what is this urinary bladder to contract so if it does not contract well that may lead to urinary retention and another very unfortunate situation might be yes impotence right that uh, autonomic nervous system is disturbed to the male organ and that may damage so much 
that blood flow to the male organ is altered so much that erection cannot be maintained for appropriate penetration right i don't know much about inappropriate penetration but anyway so what i say that it can produce impotence also this is one complication in the diabetic patient which as a doctor you should ask but please ask only men right uh, because usually they are shy to talk about you know there's something very uh, strange women find it easy to talk to their doctor about their urogenital problems men feel more difficulty to talk about it you know why because due to periods and their irregular irregularities and pregnancies and due to other gynecological reasons women are more used to to talk to the healthcare provider about their problem because men are not so regularly going through such processes so once they develop impotence or anything like that or some problem they find it very difficult to talk to the doctor right so this as a doctor or as a nurse you should inquire male patients who are diabetic if they have problem related with urogenital system or not